Today, we have the history of everyone's favorite uncle, the perennial favorite of the legendary Sonic. We're talking Jiraiya, baby. This is part three of explaining the history of the legendary signing. If you're curious about Tsunade or Orochimaru, go back and watch those videos before you watch this one. If you're wondering what's going on with my nose, my dog headbutt me. Look at him, 80 pounds of uncut, unauthorized terror. Unfortunately, my plastic surgery isn't gonna pay for itself. So please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell. So let's start these videos the way that we start these videos and answer the easy questions. Who is Jiraiya? He was one of Konoha's legendary Sanin, a war hero to the Second Great Ninja War, a teacher, a poet, a traveler, an author, but most importantly, the godfather to Naruto. And I feel as though I'm not hyperbolizing when I say this. He was the strongest of the legendary Sani, but he didn't start that way. In fact, he started very far away from being the strongest of the legendary Sani. In fact, when he was younger and he was put on Orochimaru and Tsunade's team under the tutelage of Hiruzen, when he gave them the bell test, you know, the test where the team has to steal the bell from the sensei, Jiraiya repeatedly fell for Hiruzen's tricks. So much so that Hiruzen stated that Jiraiya should attempt to be more like Orochimaru. Because much in the capacity that Sasuke was born a genius and Naruto had to come along in order to match his power later on, Orochimaru was also a genius at a young age. And Tsunade was also nothing to scoff at. She was half Uzumaki, half Senju. She was the granddaughter of Hashirama. She had plenty of natural talent. But Jiraiya came from a nowhere clan with no particular abilities until he was much older. I mean, Jiraiya was talented at one thing as a youth, and that was spying on women in the bath. In fact, when Hiruzen said that he should be more like Orochimaru, Jiraiya quips and says his transparent escape technique that makes him completely invisible to those that he's watching shows that he is talented enough, even maybe more talented than Orochimaru. This actually leads to one of my favorite moments in the manga that unfortunately gets blown right past in the anime. And Hiruzen responds to this quip and goes, you keep talking about this transparent escape technique. If it's so impressive, I'll have to come with you next time to make sure that it actually works. It's a cool moment for Hiruzen. It's a cool moment for Jiraiya, their relationship. I'm sad the anime didn't do it. However, apparently his transparent escape technique wasn't as complete as he thought it was. Because for as long as Tsunade and Jiraiya knew each other, Jiraiya had a massive crush on her. And when she, well, developed, I guess, Jiraiya began to peep on her as well. Only problem is she found him once and she hit him so hard she almost killed him in fact she hit him so hard she broke both of his arms six ribs and ruptured multiple of his organs well, listen there's a fair amount of people watching this video right now that would make that same risk to see Tsunade at this point we kind of hit a gap in the history of Jiraiya that we know essentially the next tidbit of history we know about Jiraiya is when he discovers Mount Muabuko. In the manga, we don't know how he found it, but the anime actually gave us an explanation that I kind of like. Essentially in the anime, instead of the whole bit about Jiraiya talking about his transparent escape technique and Hiruzen saying he wants to come along, Hiruzen tries to show Jiraiya what power can truly look like and summons Monkey King Enma. Essentially, Hiruzen wanted to motivate Jiraiya to get stronger by showing him what you can accomplish with ninjutsu. And Jiraiya, wanting to impress Tsunade, keeps trying to learn how to use summoning technique. Only problem is he hasn't made a blood contract with any animal. So when he actually finally gets enough chakra to do the summoning technique, he just gets reverse summoned to Mount Muobuka. And once he gets summoned there, he's confronted by a large snake that he defeats in a fight. And who else is watching but a young Gamabunta? Gamabunta then takes Jiraiya to Fukakusu, one of the great toad sages. There's two for some reason, I don't know. But Fukusaku has this kind of cool ability where he gets to predict the future and it always comes true. And Fukusaku knew that that Jiraiya would come to Mount Mubuko and even knew that he would one day receive a prophecy for Jiraiya. But before he could tell Jiraiya that prophecy, Jiraiya would have to stay in Mount Mubuko in train. Jiraiya then proceeds to split time between Mount Mubuko and Konoha and becomes vastly stronger over the years. And once he achieves a level of strength that is, I guess, appealing to Fukusaku, he gives him his prophecy. Fukusaku then delivers his prophecy and it says that Jiraiya will one day have an apprentice who will either bring peace to the world or destruction. He also tells Jiraiya that he will wander the world and write books. I'm sorry, earlier I said Jiraiya was a war hero of the second great ninja war was the third one. It's hard to tell him apart because we never got any information about him. Imagine you're Jiraiya, you got plopped into Mount Mubuko where a giant toad 
told you that you need to learn sage mode and you can do it but not that well and now you have to keep an eye on the child of prophecy and depending on how you raise them they will either create peace for the entire world or destroy it this is the guy that just liked to peep and now he is the caretaker of the literal most important person on earth so because Dryo was now looking for an apprentice in order to make sure that they don't destroy the world he became a teacher well first technically he had to make Jonin and then he became a teacher and his first Genin squad was comprised of Minato and two other people and naturally Dryo's like oh kind of nailed it here on the first attempt I think this Minato character might be my child of prop see he has incredible natural genius and you can't really blame him for thinking that it was Minato the fourth Hokage Dryo teaches Minato a bunch of things like bringing him to Mount Mobuko where he eventually masters sage mode which we found out later in the war but Minato also taught Jiraiya things most importantly the Rasengan which Minato created at the age of 15 after working on it for three years after seeing a tailed beast bomb essentially Minato saw a tailed beast bomb we assume from from Kurama because that's the only tailed beast that Konoha had in its possession at this time but why was there a tail beast bomb going off was Mito the current Jinchuriki just firing them off we don't really know but yeah anyways he condensed a bunch of chakra and then taught that to Jiraiya which Jiraiya then later obviously talked to Naruto wait no I was right it was the second great ninja war where they fought Hanzo and got the term legendary Sanin I'm never doubting myself again regardless since we're talking about the second great ninja war we should talk about it because that's what's up next while his Minato and Teu Uchi and Mikoto team was still young the second great ninja war kicked off and even though their team heroes in had disbanded Orochimaru Tsunade and Jiraiya came back together during the second great ninja war their natural chemistry made them an incredibly effective team and they carried the hope of Konoha on their backs Tsunade made sure that all of Granny Chiyo's poisons were countered and she used Lady Katsuyo to heal massive amounts of people Orochimaru and Jiraiya used Manda and Gamabunta to wipe out entire your battlefields it wasn't truly until they met Hanzo the salamander who had wiped out an entire leaf battalion before that and they were the only three left standing that they finally met their equal and Hanzo tipped a cap to him and said the fact that you're still standing makes you the legendary Sonny which literally just correlates to the three legendary ninja I went more into the politics of the second great shinobi world's war in Tsunade's video part one so if you're curious about how it kicked off why it happened what happened in the war go ahead and check that video out what truly matters when telling Jiraiya's story is what happens after the closing of the second great shinobi world war because mind you the majority of the war took place in the hidden rain four of the largest villages on earth marched and used this much smaller village as their battlefield so after their pseudo defeat at the hands of Hanzo the Salamander Jiraiya and Orochimaru and Tsunade are confronted by three orphans asking to learn ninjutsu Tsunade says to just leave them traumatized by the battle and the loss of multiple of her loved ones Orochimaru asks if he should mercy kill them but Jiraiya is still looking for the child of prophecy and is also just like Tsunade dealing with the weight of what war just did to the hidden rain do you know what a giant toad does to a city he had destroyed families lives livelihoods in his guilt drove him to stay in Ame and raise the orphans after deciding to stay in Ame to raise the orphans quickly after Jiraiya realized that one of the orphans Nagato to be specific had the Rinnegan and a dojutsu that he knew that the sage of six paths used to save the world thousands of years ago and it was at that point that he realized there's no way that this kid is not the child of prophecy and once again he was not wrong for thinking this this was a nine-year-old with two Rinnegan and so Jiraiya started to teach them ninjutsu so that Nagato would be led towards a path of salvation not destruction and lucky for Jiraiya Nagato was an incredibly sweet child he was torn between not wanting to hurt people in trying to protect his two closest friends Konan and Yahiko Jiraiya saw that this was tearing Nagato apart and told him it's okay to just protect the people that are close to you because the world is filled with endless strife and conflict fortunately Jiraiya at the time was a bit doom and gloom considering the fact that he just destroyed an entire country in a war that 
really achieved nothing. If Jiraiya had taken a separate approach here, it wouldn't have set Nagato down the path of, okay, well, I will find a way to end this endless cycle of blood and war. Because that's exactly how Nagato took Jiraiya's message. He didn't know how he was going to achieve this peace state, but he knew one day he would achieve it. Also, while Jiraiya was training the Ame orphans, he was writing his first ever book, The Tale of the Utterly Gutsy Shinobi. In fact, he started writing this book because he was inspired by what Nagato said to find a way to end this cycle of hatred. And even though Jiraiya put his blood, sweat, and tears into this book, it did not sell well, nobody came to his book signing. In fact, the only person who enjoyed it was Minato. So much so that Minato named his first child, an only child, albeit, after the main character of this book, Naruto. Yes, that's right. Naruto is the name of the main character of Jiraiya's first book. A name that Jiraiya thought of while eating ramen. Surprise, surprise, because the little spiral fish cake you get in ramen, especially that's served at Ichiraku Ramen, is called Naruto. We don't necessarily Necessarily know exactly what the book is about, but Minato remarks to Jiraiya that it seems somewhat autobiographical. This is because Naruto seems to be conflicted by a lot of the same situations that Minato has known Jiraiya to fall into over his years. The overarching theme of the book though is that naruto wants to break the curse the curse in this book is meant to symbolize the endless cycle of war hatred and pain he got this idea from nagato who the novel is actually dedicated to and surprise surprise naruto in this book never gives up that's his whole way foreshadowing much this book is actually the last thing that jiraiya gave the orphans because after three years of training them in ninjutsu he realized that they were ready to forge out on their own. So he left them a copy of the finished book in return to Konoha. Occasionally, he would hear what they were achieving with their new organization, the Akatsuki, before it turned evil. But eventually, he heard that they had all died. When Jiraiya returned to Konoha many years later, and I say many years later because the Third Great Ninja War had already happened and closed, he was offered the fourth Hokage position. Essentially, Hiruzen, who was ashamed of the fact that in his long tenure as Hokage, he is seen both the second and third great ninja wars that has lost Konoha thousands of shinobi was looking for a replacement his number one picks were either Tsunade or Jiraiya both of which he trained but also Orochimaru was on the list however he deemed that Orochimaru who actually did want to become the fourth Hokage wasn't suitable to become the fourth Hokage and chose Minato over Fugaku this obviously led to civil unrest down the line but regardless now Minato who was Jiraiya's student is the Hokage and it was actually at at this point that Minato relayed on to Jiraiya that he was going to be naming his Inkushina's first child Naruto after his main character. Jiraiya asked him not to do this though because if he was to be named after somebody that Jiraiya created that would make Jiraiya Naruto's godfather. And for those of you unfamiliar with what a godfather or a godmother is is essentially in Christian ideologies if a parent chooses somebody else to be a godparent that is to say that that godparent will raise the child if those parents pass away. But Minato and Kushina insisted this was a good thing and wanted Jiraiya to approve of Naruto having the name Naruto. Of course, they died like the second Naruto was born. So hypothetically, this is where Jiraiya should have stepped in. But unfortunately, Jiraiya didn't do this. And that's one of the reasons that Naruto had such a rough upbringing. It's even crazier when you think about the fact that one of the last things that Minato ever did while he was alive was sending a message to Jiraiya. Minato summoned Garotora and then burnt into his back the key to Naruto's stomach seat to send the message to Jiraiya to help Naruto control the power of the Nine Tails one day. Ideally, that one day would be like right now, both of his parents are dead. But Jiraiya was a traveling author who had recently found fame with his newest series of books. See, the tale of the utterly gutsy Shinobi had flopped, so Jiraiya chose a different direction to head in with his authorship. This is when he started making the Makeout series, a series that was also kind of like the utterly gutsy a shinobi autobiographical except all of these books were about his love life more importantly 
about the times he was rejected or chased out of town, things like that. They were in a sense very self-deprecating, but also romantic. And these books sold so well, they filled his bank account with zeros, which once again makes it so confusing as to why he never took care of Naruto, because he had the money. The really only excuse that you could make for Jiraiya not coming back to keep an eye on Naruto is the fact that he was keeping an eye on somebody else during this time period. If you saw my series on Orochimaru's life, you'll know that around this time period, he gets caught by Hiruzen and has to leave the leaf. And on his way out of the leaf, he's actually confronted by Jiraiya. Jiraiya comes to him because Jiraiya always considered Orochimaru one of his closest friends. And he didn't want one of his closest friends to defect from the village they had both fought, bled, and sweat for. Jiraiya pleaded with him to not leave, but the plea fell on deaf ears. And actually, ultimately, Orochimaru attacked Jiraiya to get him out of the way. And this plagued Jiraiya for a long time. He searched for a deeper meaning in Orochimaru's defection, but he couldn't find anything. He couldn't find a way to bring Orochimaru back. So instead of convincing him, he simply started to follow him in order to find meaning in his defection, to understand what he was doing. And by following Orochimaru, that brought him to the Akatsuki. And because of this, he was very often away from the village because he was keeping an eye on this dangerous organization. And this is what stopped him from ultimately becoming the fifth Hokage, once again, when Hiruzen wanted to elect him. And it also kept him away from Naruto until it became absolutely necessary that Jiraiya be near Naruto in order to protect him from said Akatsuki. So that's his backstory all the way up to when we see him originally in Naruto. Now that we have his backstory covered, I don't necessarily need to cover what happens in Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. You've seen it, but I would like to talk about his abilities and his overall strength because he is one of the strongest people in the history of Naruto and people don't talk about that enough. Jiraiya was so powerful that it stated that the entire Uchiha clan or the seven swordsmen of the mist would have paled in comparison to his strength. I mean, Kisame, the guy who fought Mike Guy in seventh gate without Samehada, and Itachi said that if both of them fought him simultaneously at best, they would reach a stalemate. Let's not forget the fact that he was also offered to be the Hokage three separate times and probably would have been offered a fourth time if he hadn't died in Ame. This is because they stated in the manga that they would have offered the position to Jiraiya after the fourth great ninja war after Tsunade stepped down instead of Kakashi. But since we're talking about Kakashi, Kakashi said that the idea of him defeating Jiraiya one-on-one -on -one was literally absurd. Kakashi, the kid who became an Ombu captain at 13 years old, the copy ninja Kakashi of the Sharingan, one of the most powerful people in the history of the show in his own right was like, nope, couldn't be me. Nagato himself said that he would have lost against Jiraiya if he had known the six paths abilities before they fought. I mean, Jiraiya was able to go in blind against Nagato, something that not even Naruto did in defeat four of the paths. Naruto had all of the recon that Jiraiya did, and that's what allowed him to win. I mean, a clone of him, Kashin Koji, was able to hold back Jigen for a little while. But where did all of this power come from? Well, he's one of the very few people in the show that we see has enough chakra and enough mastery over molding chakra to enter sage mode. But his sage mode is not perfect. While he does have a body strong enough to enter sage mode and enough chakra to mold with a nature chakra to enter sage mode, he's not good at mixing nature chakra with his own chakra to make that perfect mix of Senjutsu Chakra. Because of this, he takes on frog-like appearances. But where he outshines other Sage users is his ability to pull in Senjutsu Chakra. Well, I would say actually technically it's his ability to not pull in Senjutsu Chakra. I'll explain. So while Hashirama and Naruto would have had to stand still in order to pull in the Nature Chakra to mix with their own to make Senjutsu Chakra and enter Sage mode, Dry is actually really bad at pulling in Nature Chakra. So instead of standing still and trying to pull it in, he actually summons two toads, Ma and Pa, and fuses them to his shoulders. These two pull in nature chakra, mix it with their own chakra, and then pump that into Jiraiya while he fights. But this allows him to fight while pulling in nature chakra, something other sage mode users can't use outside of Kabuto or Jugo. But this isn't the entirety of his toad abilities. No, he's also able to summon Gamma Bunta, one of the largest toads out there. And by combining his abilities with Gamma Bunta, he could 
wipe out entire battlefields full of enemies. He could summon a toad's esophagus that would cut off his enemies from escaping. That's because the toad esophagus would cover the area and therefore there would be no way for them to escape from the mouth. Unless of course you're Itachi and then you have Amaterasu and that just kind of burns holes in anything. But on top of that, he was also known for his oil release. Actually a fun fact, Dry's headband actually says oil, but Dry would frequently spew oil out of his mouth to either make a surface slick or to combine it with a fire attack in order to make sticky fireballs. And if that doesn't work, he has his needle Jizo, which is essentially his ability to control his hair and make it spiky and use it to defend himself in a complete cocoon or reach out and attack people with it a lot like how Orochimaru reaches out with his arms or his neck. He can even shoot this hair in projectile-like Senbon. And if all of that doesn't do it for you, he can use the Rasengan. He has fire, earth, water, wind, yin, and yang released. Everything but lightning. And if he truly gets desperate, he has access to one of the most powerful genjutsu in the entirety of Naruto. Demonic Illusion Toad Confrontation Chant is a genjutsu that he uses in combination with Mom Pa. Essentially, Mom Pa sing a song that is a genjutsu sound-based ability. The only problem is that the two toads have to warm up their voices and find the correct harmony to activate this genjutsu, which leaves them vulnerable to attack. So if Jiraiya could hold off a person long enough for the two toads to find the correct harmony, this genjutsu is so powerful that it was able to put Nagato into genjutsu. This is because this genjutsu is so powerful, it transcends any level of skill. It does not matter how genjutsu resistant you are, this genjutsu trumps that. And the only way to get out is to have the stone swords of the toad samurai pierce your heart. Or if the users give the command for the jutsu to end. His stats in the third data book give him a 35.5 rating. To put that into perspective, Naruto's was a 26. Dry was an incredible teacher, an incredible author, and an incredible person. But just like all of the other legendary Sanin, he dealt with a lot of loss in his life. He dealt with the guilt of tearing countries apart in the name of Konoha's honor. He lost his friends who he thought he had by his side, just like Naruto did with Sasuke. He watched the people that he gave love to in order to create a better universe for by finding the child of prophecy and leading them in the right way, literally stab him in the back. And yet almost every single time you see him in the show, he's smiling. He, like all the other Sani, is a story of resiliency. And he specifically tells the story of the fact that even though your story may already be laid out for you, it doesn't mean you can't put your own flair on it. Fortunately, he's kind of back with Kashin Koji, so I'm excited to see how Boruto handles that. For the moment, that's Jiraiya's story. What's wild is if he had survived, it's pretty much implied that Tsunade had realized her feelings for him after she had sent him away to Ame, so... If he had came back, they could have maybe got married. But that's for me to cry alone about tonight. Please help me pad my tears by liking this video, subscribing to the page, and hitting that noti bell. Problem with doing this series is like, I came in and I was like, oh, Tsunade is my favorite of the legendary Sonny. And then I did Tsunade's video and I was like, that's been validated. And then I did Orochimaru's and I was like, oh, wait, no, I really like Orochimaru. Now I'm doing Jirai and I'm looking at it and I'm like, might be basic. He might be my favorite as well. I need to stop doing deep dives, but I hope you enjoyed it.